Here we go, here we go, here we go again. It's In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. Uh, back after a little bit of a break, of course, uh, post Cheltenham to digest everything that's gone on. Uh, and, of course, uh, to uh, do rain dances for the next three weeks to get geared up for Aintree. Bang, 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 four grade ones on day one uh, before we, uh, we gear up for a uh, heavy ground Grand National. Uh, assuming, of course, we can find the going stick uh, by that point. Uh, but my name is Ross Briley. I'll be with you for the next three nights, uh, tonight included, of course, uh, and, uh, and getting uh, uh, excited uh, about uh, a few of those Cheltenham form lines being put to the test. Or uh, will it go the way uh, that uh, many entry racers go, uh, that those that, uh, that skipped uh, a, a trip to the Cotswolds uh, come and have their day well, in the rain, I guess. Uh, but uh, we'll soon find out. This is live and interactive as ever. So uh, get in touch on the chat box. Plenty of you already have. Uh, and uh, give us a, a like and a subscribe on YouTube if you haven't done so already. But we've got a bit of everything tomorrow, haven't we? We've got, uh, we've got juvenile hurdlers, we've got novice chasers, we've got staying chasers, and we've got uh, sort of the, the hurdlers in between somewhere uh, uh, there or thereabouts, haven't we? And Dan Skelton had a cracking uh, at Channel Festival. Can he back it up uh, with uh, those winners at Aintree? He's got a, a couple taking their chance tomorrow and of course Protector at, uh, as well later in the week so it could be good for him. Uh, but uh, will it be good for you? Let us know what you fancy. Uh, let us know what you backed. Of course we will do a full in-depth Grand National Preview on Friday night. Uh, we'll be through from six till midnight. Six hours, ten minutes on each horse. Uh, no, that's not going to be happening. But uh, we'll hopefully, we'll tip you the winner, maybe the tri -cast. you never know. Uh, but uh, what have we got for you tomorrow? Well, uh, like I said, we've got a cracking card and a cracking panel as ever. Uh, and uh, what an absolute pleasure it is to see for the first time uh, in the best part of three to four weeks, the one and only Mr Paul Keeley. Hello mate, how are you? I am uh, croaky and full of cold as ever. Uh, you are, aren't you? You've been ill non-stop, haven't you? Can't get rid of it mate, but um, every time I see you, uh, I perk right up. Well, that's because I'm such a picture of health, isn't it? That is true, <laughs> that is true. Uh, right, it might be pretty soft <laughs> this, uh, this week. Uh, yeah, it's going to be miles, miles, miles worse than Cheltenham, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because, you know, we always see Aintree as being a speed favouring new track, you, 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 you say about horses, say for the Triumph, you think, oh, we'd be better off at Aintree where it's an easier track and all that. But when the ground gets as deep as the going stick suggests it is, it's one of the most testing courses in the country yeah. and it's going to be proper hard work. Uh, are we going to see the type of races where whatever turns into the home straight in the one, two, does kind of get. Uh, I don't know because horses can just stop in this sort of ground, can't yeah. they? Very quickly. Like, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Is it the age old problem of. Uh, trying to work out which horses will carry their form over from Cheltenham and which won't. And now we're going from one Heavy Ground Festival to another, which is very, very rare. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it's uh, going to be fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right, well, uh, you've been in good nick, though. You've been in good form. Yeah, yeah. I've banged in a few winners uh, lately. I've even banged in a few on the all weather, which has amazed me. Yeah. Uh, it's funny looking at horses you, you know, you've barely ever heard of, heard of because you've been following jumps all season and you suddenly get thrown into it and... Uh, one or two popped out, it's nice. Bit of, bit of a, a fresh approach helps, I think, every now and then. It does sometimes, yeah. So, um, and uh, joining us uh, tonight on the show as well, uh, uh, delighted to announce that uh, uh, Reading FC's new um, <laughs> first team manager, first team coach, I don't know, under 19s, uh, uh, tea lady, whatever, uh, Tom Siegel is at home. How are you doing, Tom? Not the manager, but I am the tea lady. You got it right eventually, <laughs> Ross, yeah. Uh, well, you, you, I don't know what you put in the tea, mate, but it's been working. Yeah, we were in Bristol last night. It was a long trip to Bristol. Enjoyed it very much. We won. So we're not going to the bottom tier. We're not going to go into Division 2 by the look of things. So we'll stay in Division 1. And I thoroughly enjoy it. I thought it was brilliant. Lovely stuff. Well, glad that you'll uh, take the long trip to Bristol, but you won't pop into the studio to see me. But anyway, uh, Aintree, uh, <laughs> three days, uh, like I said. Yeah, I, I mean, I just put that question to Keels, but I kind of think, or I, I like horses at Aintree that race prominently and kick on anyway. And in the back of my mind, there was that meeting on it early on in the, the season uh, where, uh, where Pembroke won and some of those races, I mean, they were absolutely desperate. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not going to be pretty, is it? Well, I hope not. I mean, I hope it's not as bad as that. I mean, we don't actually know until we see it. The going stick suggests it's of similar. It's in, it's in the twos at the moment and there's more rain today. I know that. So, you know, normally when the going stick gets down to that level, it's really, really, really bad you know, really, really bottomless ground. But we don't know. We'll watch the first couple of races. We can make our decision then. And, you know, hopefully it'll be, things get easier on the Friday and Saturday where we'll know exactly how conditions are. But at the moment, I'm expecting it to be really, really tiring ground. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, uh, I've gone through the speed figures and basically sort of 
uh, deleted anything that isn't uh, on soft. Uh, to, uh, to heavy. So um, uh, joining us uh, tonight as well is uh, Professor David Stevens, um, ready and raring to go. Look at that. What, I mean, it's amazing it, it, what, a, what a good pair of glasses does for a man. You, you, you look borderline intelligent. <laughs> well, it's, it's all to do with old age and failing eyesight, nothing to do with rising intelligence, I can assure you. Um, I'm about six miles away from the course and it is literally, the sun has just come out for the first time in about three months. Um, it's not going to be enough to save it from being very testing, as we know. But look, testing ground isn't going to come as a surprise to anyone. I think the fields are really fascinating, intriguing. There's lots of little subplots. Obviously, the trainers title, both Dan and, and Paul, are running plenty. Willie Mullins is running plenty. Willie, second favourite to win the UK champion, champion uh, trainers championship. Gordon Elliott, perhaps because he doesn't want to take Willie on at Punchestan, is bringing plenty over. So I think there's some intriguing storylines to come none more so of course than Nicky Henderson I mean 20 odd years ago when I sort of first started punting relatively seriously it was always very simple just do not back Nicky Henderson horses at Aintree he has them right for Cheltenham and that was it times have changed and Nicky as we know can have winners here without doubt but this year more than ever it's going to be fascinating having had that disastrous Cheltenham just can he make up for it here so really fascinating and some some quality racing of course all leading up to the world's greatest race on Saturday afternoon but that was a long-winded way of saying we've got a price boost. And I'll explain when we come to this race why the Coral compilers chose this particular horse. But it's Bob Ollinger in the Aintree Hurdle. Has actually been replaced now as favourite by Impere Passe. He was 7-4, to four, or he is 7-4, to four, I should say. But for the duration of this live show, he's a 9-4 to four shot up to 20 quid. So that's Bob Ollinger in the Aintree Hurdle. OK, well, I don't know if it is the, the wisdom of old age, David, all those glasses, but that was the most articulate I've ever heard you. That was, uh, that was wonderful. So, Because um, uh, I haven't opened the rosé behind me yet, but yeah, that time will come. That's true. It's, uh, I mean, who needs, who needs dumbbells? Just uh, get those two out. Uh, rosé. Uh, rosé for our coral friend, I see. Yes, lovely bottle of rosé. Uh, and some cornflakes. What an evening you've got ahead of you. Uh, right, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be weird, isn't it, Kills? Because like you said, you've got the, the Henderson factor. I mean, uh, obviously, Cheltenham was, a, was an absolute shocker. And you, you'd be hoping for more between now and, and, and then from the, the, from the Henderson horses, wouldn't you? Well, he basically shut down for a week after, um, uh, you know, uh, afterwards, didn't he? Um, he had a winner. Uh, on the Saturday after Cheltenham, and I think he's had eight runners since. One winner in a Mickey Mouse mare's hurdle. Um, you know, there's not enough evidence to go on, really, is there? So we just don't know. Uh, but there's certainly no, there's certainly nothing to make me think I want to be back in. These I, I, horses I know, are the same I mean, price as they were at, at Cheltenham, which is yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it, it, it all depends on what chance you're prepared to take, doesn't it? I mean, I don't blame bookmakers for having them the same price to start with. Mm. We'll see what the market, you know, the markets may tell us a little bit more in, in the run-up to the races. Um, you hear all sorts of negative gossip and that, you know, throughout the throughout the year generally anyway. Yeah, yeah. You? Like, you know, and, you know, a lot of it turns out to be nonsense. Some of it turns out to be true. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, for me, there's, you know, there's no evidence that makes me want to back them. Uh, so I'll be opposing them. But, you know, part of you wants him to come back and, and, and have a good mm. festival. Oh yeah, from a heart perspective, definitely. Oh. Yeah, you want to you want to you want to see the best horses from the best trainers run up to their uh, their level. Absolutely. Uh, but um, and are we look, do we like entry in general? I mean, I, I put it to you, gentlemen, that it's a bold shout, but I think we should move all the Cheltenham races to entry, or at least swap the tracks. We should run them all at entry. I think it's a better <laughs> race course. I think the facilities are incredible. I, I absolutely love it, Aintree. Uh, I not actually haven't been to Aintree since 1991, I don't think. So, right. uh, so it's I changed. Tell, I couldn't tell you what the facilities are like. Um, I absolutely love it. But one of the reasons I love it is, is we don't spend a whole bloody year talking about it. <laughs> like, you know what That's I mean? And I know I'm paid to do it, and you have to do it. and. Uh, and you know when it comes to Cheltenham, but I just think it's so much, so much more refreshing. You just, it just suddenly happens, doesn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's now here. Uh, I haven't discussed said a word. Uh, you know, we've probably talked about the Grand National a couple of times in uh, um, minor moments, but other than that, it's just been a case of here's Aintree and let's get, let's get stuck into it. Love yeah. it. Well, I mean, you, you should go. It is, it's absolutely fantastic, and I mean, it's, it's, it's just monstrous as well. I mean, it's, it's D David, you're, I mean, you'll be, are you there all, all week? I assume, but it's, I mean. Cheltenham feels like a, obviously it's a, it's a cracking race course, but um, I don't know. There's something about Aintree that the, the the grandeur, the I don't know. There is something about that track. 
Yeah, we can leave the cross country and the Kim Murich out, and that's fine. Bring the rest here. But now, look, I mean, Kiel's has said it. We're talking ourselves out of a job here. We talk about the Cheltenham Festival all winter. Aintree, we come straight into it. And I say, we've got terrific grade one. But anyone will tell you, trainers, jockeys, owners, Cheltenham, of course, it's important. It matters probably too much. Aintree is still important, but people come here and have a bit more fun. The city of Liverpool embraces it. The facilities, as you say, are fantastic. Kills, if you haven't been since the early 90s, we need to rectify that next year. We need to we need to get you back here. Long overdue another visit. Well, if you want to invite me, mate, and you know, pay me train fare and put me in, give me some hospitality, I'm I'm there. Like, you know, I mean don't remember don't remember seeing any invites. That goes for every race course in the country with you. Yeah, course. I was gonna say that's not um, you know, it's, it's, you, you name it. Uh, Foss last Chelmsford, <laughs> if that's the package, he's off. But uh, all right stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean I, and also shout out to my dad as well, by the way, he sent me a message yesterday saying I've I bought you a present. Uh, and it was a, a vinyl record of all of the commentaries of all Red Rum's Grand Nationals that he picked up for a pound in a charity Brilliant. shop. So uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, I was going to say I'll, I'll give it away and auction it off for charity, but um, uh, I don't know, can we get more than a pound for it? That's the question. Uh, anyway, let's uh, get stuck into uh, to our Aintree. We'll be uh, uh, right at it after this. Fancy a bet, but find it confusing? Do not fear. Smartview is here to help you. We've taken the traditional race card and removed all the jargon and abbreviations which can be daunting for newcomers. The result is a race card that means making informed choices and picking winners is easier than ever. Our racing experts and data scientists have created an algorithm that puts everything a seasoned punter would consider into the attribute bars you see on the race card and assesses each runner with an overall score out of 100. Okay, there we go. Yeah, uh, cracking little uh, uh, innovation, the smart view uh, at, uh, on the Racing Post uh, app. In fact, we should, I'll tell you what, we should, I'm going to try and get the producers, if we've got the time, to tell us what the top six ho horses are tomorrow and see if we can go get a play spot straight through the, uh, straight through the line at entry with those, those top horses. Yeah, there you go. Uh, hello to everyone watching. Liam Edge, Lee Richardson, uh, Matthew Slate, Tom Leach, uh, Steve Dickinson, uh, Brian Galt, good evening to you. Uh, and to Ninja Squirrel, who says Corbin's Cross. Uh, uh, for him tomorrow, uh, and he will be since he was ousted from the Labour Party. Now, let's move on to Aintree for the 145. Then, the manifesto, speaking of which, uh, the novices chase Grey Dawning, Even Money, Illite Tom, 3 to 1, Ginny's Destiny, 7 to 2, uh, Blow Your Wad is 9 to 1, Colonel Harry uh, is 28 to 1 outsider of the bunch. Again, we've got the novice chase problem once again at Aintree, where there's so many possible options uh, for these horses that they end up with small fields, uh, which is a bit of a shame given what it uh, an absolute crackerjack it was between Grey jo uh, Dawning and Ginny's Destiny at Cheltenham. Uh, but we do throw the Arkle form into the mix in the shape of Illite Tom, who did not uh, have a fun time uh, at uh, Cheltenham over two miles and will probably be better suited uh, by this. Uh, but I'll come to you first, uh, Paul Keeley, for this. Uh, cracking head-to-head uh, -head again from Grey Dawning and, and Ginny's Destiny. Uh, but there is a potential that um, we thought Aintree would be different to Cheltenham, but... We have three Grade One winners, all trained by Willie Mullins again tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not impossible, is it? He's having a crack at the trainers' champion. That, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a look at his last fifteen years, and he averages about, you know, just over nine runners per year. And he's got fifteen over the first two days. The mm. last last time he had absolutely tons. He had thirty-three in two thousand and sixteen, when he had six, came away with six winners. That's when he was going for the title. Uh, against Paul Nichols, so just in case he wins the Nash, which he's going to need to, but he's got three of the first five in the betting there, then, then he, he's running some of his better horses. Um, Elete Tom is interesting. The only thing I got right about the Arkle was he'd find it too sharp, uh, which is what he did, but he also belted the fourth last, yeah. and it'd probably have been second if he hadn't have done. Um, two things about him, he's tiny, uh, the ground's deeper, and he will not get away with a mistake like that at Aintree. Yeah. Because they are miles stiffer than at Cheltenham. Uh, that's the other thing. So you've got, you know, we've got ground that's deeper and, and stiffer fences as well. I would say that two and a half miles, small field, heavy ground, I thought partly the reason why he jumped so badly was because he was just taken out of his comfort zone yeah, by a proper be, two miles. Yeah, could be, because he is actually a pretty good jumper, isn't he, despite yeah. being a small horse. Yeah, I wouldn't argue. I, just, I still think Grey Dawning is the most obvious winner uh, because we know he's a heavy ground horse. And although we're, you know, you always have that worry about where the horses um, go from one festival to another, I think him and Ginny's destiny got the best of the ground at Cheltenham because it was on the first race on the new course after a dry Wednesday and before the rain came that afternoon and the time actually wasn't that bad. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and Grey Dawning loves heavy ground. I have, however, backed a complete rag. So have I, actually. <laughs> 
Yes, I've I, I backed Colonel Harry. Um, first of all, he's a mud lover. Yep. He's two from three on heavy ground, and, and then his other one was second in a grade one over two mile, which is way too short. I was actually looking forward to having a right punt on him in the three mile handicap chase. That's where I thought they were going to go with him, and he was a shorter price for it. But I can see this. Um, I don't know whether it was the plan at Cheltenham to be held up last. I mean, it can't have been the plan. Uh, it was so far but, out of his Yeah, ground. but there was no, you know, there was no rush to put him into the ground, and he was still, yeah. you know, the jockey still hadn't moved on him five out, and, you know. The first five home were in the first six in the, in, in uh, all the way yeah. around. Uh, the only the, the only. I mean, he went past sort of four horses over the uh, yeah. after the last yeah. fence. Yeah, and, and, and he flew home. So hopefully he'll be a bit closer. I think he's a decent animal. He's got something to find. Uh, but I don't think we've seen the best of him. We've seen how good the others are. I don't think we've seen the best of him. He will absolutely love conditions. I've backed him without small. I've backed him uh, <laughs> against a lot small. Yeah. I've backed him. Without uh, Grey Dawning, and I backed him without Grey Dawning and Ginny's Destiny. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, not not quite all in on the first race, but I'm you know, I'm fairly well involved in it. You're covering all bases. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, Colonel Harry, like yeah, he's a he's a proper proper self ground horse. Jamie Snowden he didn't have a I mean he didn't have a great time at Cheltenham, did he? Uh, Jamie Snowden uh, um, at Tom, but he's been in cracking form for, for the majority of the rest of the season. He's had a good week as well. So yeah, you could I could see Colonel Harry definitely getting a lot closer to uh, to these, and then. I mean, from that, 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 that race at Cheltenham, Grey Dawning and Ginny's Destiny uh, were in such a good rhythm from early on that, that nothing else could go with them. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. The, the, I thought uh, Grey Dawning got a brilliant ride. But I like him. I like him a lot. L.A.T. Tom is an interesting one, isn't it? Because he jumped brilliantly at Leopardstown and he jumped as bad as I've seen a horse jump at Cheltenham the next time. It was weird. I expected him. That was the thing that I thought gave him a shot in the arc was his jumping. He was on the back foot at the first, he was slow at the second, and he literally smashed into every fence after that. So to finish third like he did was mm. a pretty good effort. Just just whether two and a half miles in this sort of conditions will will suit him, I'm not sure. In his destiny, I don't know. I, I, those, those, those Harry Cobden rides at Cheltenham, they're pretty good. They're pretty special from the front. They're quite hard to beat. I'm not sure they work quite so well around Aintree. It could do. But I'm against him. Uh, I think Bray Dawning will win, but I, I, I fully get, you know, I wouldn't put anyone off having bets at 28 to 1, even if Keels is a tip bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> 28, <laughs> 28 to 1, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's a big price for a horse that loves mm. soft ground. He? And he looked, he didn't. It looked like it was a get it ready race, didn't it, at, at Cheltenham? I mean, in a, in a, without it being one, if you know what I mean. Mm. He sort of got behind and never really got going. But he did finish. He did oh. finish the race off. And, you know, if he could keep in touch, he's a bit of a. I just think he's a bit slow, but these conditions could be perfectly ta tailor made for him. So, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was really hoping he'd go in that three mile handicap on Saturday, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I mean, because I, I thought he had a cracking chance in that. I mean, the only reason I've, I, I, I backed him. Absolutely filthed him each way earlier on in the week, three places. So, I mean, if as long as he plugs on into third, because I thought this race is going to cut up. But, I mean, personally, I do think Illite Tom, and I, every time I see him, I, I know most of his forms over two miles, but he, and he is a small horse, but he doesn't look a two miler to me. I mean, he powered home at Leopardstown, he powered home at Cheltenham, he, like you said, Tom, yeah, he I every think, fence. I think, he, I think he wants the trip, yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, and, and again, I went through the speed figures, I went, right, anything on, on, on good ground or anywhere near, get rid of, and he's. He's quite comfortably clear on that, and of course, David Stevens, like you said, he's uh, he's Willie Mullins. You've got, don't you have some? You've got some Mullins uh, bits and bobs for tomorrow, haven't you? We have, yeah. It's interesting hearing Kills just reiterate the, the the volume of numbers that Willie's bringing over this year. Um, I say if he goes and has a, a one-two or a one-three in the national, he's banging the mix for the trainer title. But in terms of tomorrow, a Willie Mullins double uh, was eight to eleven is now evens, and a Willie Mullins treble. We've seen him do that plenty of times. It is nine to two from seven to two. Just going back to this race, I mean, I, I share Tom's concerns that Ilote Tom wants two and a half miles in this ground. Um, I think Ray Dornin is a really solid favourite. Goes on heavy. We're going to get our first chance, obviously, early on to see how the Cheltenham form stacks up. I think Ginny's Destiny is a Cheltenham horse. I think Ray Dornin Aintree will suit him better than Ginny's Destiny. If you want to take one, obviously, that didn't go to Cheltenham, where you've only got one option, blow your wad. And I can see the angle for that. He's won well at Kempton a couple of times. Seems to go on any ground. Um, so I couldn't put anyone off him. But I think I think Grey Dawning is a very solid favourite. OK. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, blow your wad. I did, I, those Kempton slash Ascot slash Sundown, you know, you're right-handed. 
stiff track courses. I'm, I always slightly wary about them when they come for these kind of races. But anyway, uh, the manifesto, Paul Keeley. Uh, yeah, I think Grey Dawn will probably win, but I have backed. Uh, forgot his name now. <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> Colonel Larry. Again, you've already, meant, you've I've already moved, moved on. on to the second race. Yeah, yeah, sorry about enough. that, chaps. Uh, Tom Siegel. Uh, I just don't like Ginny's Destiny and Ilete Tom, so, uh, and Blow Your Rod, really. So it's the same as Keel's really. I think Grey Dawning will win. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, he, he might well win, but I do think Ilete Tom should not be. Uh, I will put them closer together in the betting. Uh, David Stevens? Yeah, Grey Dawning for me. Okay, lovely stuff. Uh, as for uh, those on the, uh, the chat, uh, Tom Leach says Grey and Ginny's beat nothing. Trevor Clark says Ilate Tomp to win. Uh, the 2.20 at entry, uh, the, the juvenile hurdle here, uh, Sir Gino is 5-6. to six. He was uh, all the talk for the, uh, the triumph and didn't turn up. Uh, can he uh, uh, walk the walk tomorrow? He's 5-6 to six to, to beat uh, Kajizi at 3-1. to one. Calif de Burley at 11-2. to two. Nürburgring 9-1. to one. Interlotto uh, is 16s and Dirty Den. 150 to 1, turning up for a bit of prize money uh, potentially uh, for this at this four year race uh, tomorrow. So, um, really fascinating uh, lineup here, uh, Tom. I know we've only got the, the six runners, but obviously you've got uh, two horses from the uh, the Triumph. You've got the favourite who skipped it. You've got uh, Calif de Burley. I mean, talk about talking horses. If he, if he wants to win a Gold Cup in a couple of years, he better be going, uh, better be going close in this. Uh, Interlotto is a, a proper heavy ground horse as well. Uh, and, uh, and Dirty Den for your uh, EastEnders fans as well. It's got something for everyone. Yeah, you didn't even mention my German, if the, all the motor racing fans out there, Nürburgring, I think he's got a chance. Uh, I, it's an interesting market, isn't it? Sergino was about 5-2 to two for the Triumph before he was pulled out. He didn't run. We don't know the Henderson form. I don't back Mickey Henderson horses on heavy ground, full stop. I just don't. I've had a long history of losing when I back Mickey Henderson horses on, on heavy ground, so... I was surprised he's odds on. I really was. I mean, I love the horse. I thought he was putting the performance of the season went nearly, but well, definitely for juveniles when he won at, won at Cheltenham uh, on trials day. But five to six, heavy ground, not seen him. Nicky Henderson form against, uh, and you've got Car Geese or whatever they call her, Car G's or whatever, I don't know. Uh, she actually enhanced her reputation at the Cheltenham Ooh. Festival. She, she ran an absolute blinder in to be second. She looked like the winner the whole way round, really, in the triumph. And... It seems like the prices are, are complete. They should be much closer, I think, on on uh, just on all known. Well, on, firstly on form, and secondly on uh, the doubts we have about Sergino. So I'm slightly surprised by the prices. I thought uh, my, 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 I've backed Nurburgring. Now I know he was a long way behind in the triumph, but that was his first run since December. I think he sort of ran like he wasn't ready for it. He was another Colonel Harry. He was out the back and then sort of finished in. Finished strongly into fourth. He he should have beaten Kargis the time before at Leopardstown. He was a short head behind her, but if you watch the race, he was in front before and after the line, and would have been 15 lengths in front of her if he hadn't got stopped five times. So he's a he's a horse that absolutely loves heavy ground. When he won at, I'm not sure it was on the flat, might have been Garrett, might have been somewhere really really testing, but he won by five lengths. He won a maiden by five lengths on heavy ground. He just loves it. I thought he's a strong stayer. I think it's going to be you know, they're going to be walking when they come over the line. So, for me, at the prices, I see he's into single figures now. But for me, I thought Nurburgring was was my bet. I do think I do expect Sergino to be a bigger price than five to six. I really do. And Cargis has the best form. But for me, it's Nurburgring. I'd love Sergino to win because I think he's a superstar. But heavy ground with all the doubts, I couldn't back him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nurburgring, unsurprisingly, yeah, it does have good. Heavy ground form. You'd think he want want it like a road, wouldn't you? But um, yeah, he's um, yeah. I mean, I, I backed him at Cheltenham, and he was in. He was one of the, the the back end of the week. I had what you know the ones that can't finish out of the frame. Um, and I, 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 I was about two photos. I was thinking he, he's got absolutely no chance, and I cannot believe this horse finished. Uh, oh, absolutely flew. Yeah, I backed him as well, and it was driving me mad. I've, I've jumped off him this time, funnily enough, mm. and backed the other. Um, Joseph O'Brien. Joseph O'Brien. Fifty percent of his horses at this meeting are finished in the first three. Uh, which is a better record than anybody, but it is from a you know a much smaller sample. I think it's only had eight, so you're bound think, you're only had 18, injuries, 18 runners in the in the last however many years he's been training. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, you know when he went, you know, so I was look, I was looking at both of them. Into into lot of was another one. This is an absolute proper heavy ground horse, isn't it? Like you know. Now I don't know what happened. You know, if that's as good as he is at Leopardstown, uh, in between, then he's not good enough to win this, is he? But I don't think that was him. Uh, 
O'Brien was having a real torrid time with his jumpers in February at the time. It wasn't just his jumpers. Uh, I remember him having uh, runners at Dundalk that were getting beaten out of sight. Uh, yeah, he did have quite a few winners in February on, on the on the all well of mm. those. So I, I did look at that, but on over jumps they were running terrible. So, so um, yeah, I just thought I'd give him a chance. I just thought I'd give him a chance at a big price. I mean, the thing with Sergino, he could be he could be superb. And I will say to give him his credit, he was he might have been five to two just before the race, but I mean he was. He was four or six, two weeks before it, wasn't yeah. he? Like, you know what I mean? Everyone thought, you know, he's an absolute superstar. Is his form that good? This is the question mark, isn't it? Because we know that Burdett Road was way too keen. Yeah. Uh, when, when he won on trials day, a length, you know, eleven lengths behind Tagino was Melantino. He was beating fifteen lengths of one hundred and twenty-six yeah. in the Boodles. It's not. I mean, I didn't think it was that good to begin with. I mean, like it's I not said, absolute standard. I thought I yeah. did think it. I did think it was that good to begin with. I'm now. I'm now beginning to question it. And like Tom said, you know, heavy ground. He beat Salvatore Monday on heavy ground, uh, obviously, on his debut, but he got beaten well, that's outside in the triumph. There was a talk, not of this, this Salvatore Monday, he's a proper monster mm. as well, and he beat yeah, outside. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was he, he was back down to 4-1 before the decks, and yeah. then soon, straight after the decks, he was like 12. So yeah. It was ridiculous, and that, you know. So, who knows? Like, you know, don't know what to expect of him, so I think you have to oppose him. Cargizzi, I think, got outstayed. Mm. And I think this is going to be a much tougher race. Uh, it's going to, you know, the, the, the ground is going to be a lot deeper. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, I know what you it's mean, two but, mile but one. it is that, f it is a sh sharper, flatter track, it's a sharper, it? it's, it's a sharper, flatter track, yeah. I, 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 I understand that. When, last, when, when Apple's J won on soft ground in 2016, her winning time was only a second and a bit faster than the Triumph Hurdle yeah. uh, on similar ground. But she won by 41 lengths here uh, and was a completely different class of animal to the rest. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So uh, I would mind betting you it's a slower time and it's harder work. Mm. Um, I will say that uh, Willie Mullins has won this twice in the past 10 years with two runners, both mm. of them fillies, both mm. of them placed in the triumph. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, and this is the only, how many did he run in that race and, and he's only sent one? Yeah, yeah, can see it, can see it for sure. Can see it for sure. Um, Calif de Burley, tell us about, uh, about him. Well, it's, it's funny because I was at Kempton when he won, and okay, he made a meal of it. Paul Nichols said afterwards he thinks they, you know, they should have gone on with him rather than trying to uh, do the other one for speed. Mm. Uh, and the form hasn't worked out great. But you know, in the winners' enclosure afterwards, he was, you know, people were trying to ask him about Caldwell Potter, who'd just been sold for seven hundred odd grand or whatever it was. And uh, he said, "Can we talk about this horse, please?" Yeah. Like, you know, he's you know he's the most exciting horse I've had for a long while, and he really thinks the world of him. But he's done nothing but drift yeah. uh, all day. Now, he was backed earlier in the week. He's you know he, he's, not, he's not a mile off him, is he? I don't think um, he's got a chance. He's becoming tempting. Yeah, I mean he's one of the heavy ground. His, his, his sires are really good heavy ground sire as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, there's no there's, there's there's no issues with the ground, and the fact that it'll be a real test. Yeah. Uh, should suit him, so I don't get it. I think it's a, I think it's an open race. Mm. Um, I've had a couple of quid on Interlotto. If Sergino is layable at odds on, I'd probably do that. Okay. Uh, <coughs> but again, yeah, I start, I start to look at the races tomorrow, David, and I might, I might get involved in those Willie Mullins uh, specials, really, because um, <laughs> obviously if the ground is, is absolutely shocking. But she did get outstayed. I thought she got outstayed by a, a few to chaser. I think in Majburra, uh, uh, you know, on heavy ground, two mile one on the new track at Cheltenham. In my head, she's, she, 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 I mean, at the very least, she's going to come there swinging because that's what she does. So I thought Cargizzi was very interesting. Where do you stand on the Sergino debate? I, I, I can't wait for this. Obviously, it's going to be our first look at a Nicky Henderson runner this week. I didn't fancy Sergino at all for the Triumph Hurdle. I thought the beating of Burdett Road just, just didn't amount to as much as everyone thought at the time. He could still be a superstar. Funnily enough, I'm, I'm less concerned by the ground than Tom. I mean, he's one round all toy, which would have been heavy. So it's more, I'm just not sure the form is there and... Flipping it. Flipping it. They've got French going, French going reports. They're about as reliable as Reading's strikers. <laughs> My God. I wouldn't, we wouldn't have a clue what heavy ground that, that, what that means. It could be anything. Fair enough. OK, I don't, I don't fancy him anyway, based on his form. And there is the question mark over Nicky's horses. Let's, let's see how he goes. I really like Masper, the horse that won the Triumph Hurdle. I can say all of this because I didn't do the In the No preview Thursday for Gold Cup Day. Um, but Majbra is one of the highlights of the Cheltenham Festival for me. Um, he's a big, big horse, Majbra. I think they were quite surprised he had the speed to win a triumph hurdle. I think Cargizzi getting seven pounds here. I don't she won't mind the ground at all. Um, the fact that, say, Willie Mullins. If Willie Mullins wanted to win the British Trainers' Championship every season, I'm, I'm sure he could mm -hmm. if, he, if he just set his mind to it. I think she's the standout getting the weight. I really like Calif de Burley as well. I think perhaps Paul thought this wasn't going to be quite such a tough race. 
he's won two races at Kempton this year. We've sponsored both of them. So I've sort of seen Paul and connections in the aftermath of both victories. And they clearly love this horse potentially as a, you know, a future star chaser rather than a, a juvenile hurdler. So I can overlook him here slightly. So, yeah, I like Cargeezy to get to, to get another one on the board for Willie Mullins. OK, there we go. Let's see the four-year race tomorrow then. Uh, Keels, you're going with... Uh, I've had a couple of quid on him to Lotto, not confident, but there you go. OK. Tom Siegel? Yeah, I'm the same. I, I, I think you're right about Cargeezy. Uh, I mean, I know Kiel's is make, makes a good point about her not staying, but she beat the rest by quite a long way. So I think she's the most likely winner, really. But I, I, I'm, I've had a few quid like Kiel's on Nürburgring, but not, not on that. OK, there we go. Uh, uh, Cargeezy hit the front too soon. The triumphs of Stevens set 99. Uh, and uh, bu- 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 fresh horses at Aintree says Trevor Clark, Caliph de Berle, uh, and uh, Lee Richardson says, "Can you do a shout out to Ella, uh, my nine-year-old? She loves the show uh, when you did a shout out before. She was so happy, indeed. So good evening to you, Ella. That's Paul Keeley. Good, good Hello, away. Ella. There you go. And uh, she'll see that in her nightmare. Hiding under the sofa now. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, Paul Keeley's waving at me. Uh, right, uh, moving on then to the uh, uh, to the bowl, uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, the the Gold Cup runner up in the shape of Jody Kalom at seven to four. Shishkin is five to two. Corbett's Cross is three to one. Brave Man's Game ten to one. Ahoy Senor at fourteen. Thunder Rock twenty five. Gentleman's Game is twenty eight to one. So a handful of horses uh, from uh, this year's Cheltenham Gold Cup, of course, uh, with uh, with Shishkin who uh, skipped the festival. Corbett's Cross who won the uh, the not four miler on the uh, the bridle uh, and Thunder Rock turning up for uh, a bit of fun and games as well. So uh, as ever, it's a, yeah, a fascinating uh, lineup. And uh, again, we as I said uh, Keels, Normally we look at this race and you think, okay, who probably didn't say the trip at, uh, at Cheltenham or we'll enjoy the, the speedier test round here? Uh, it is going to be very different. Um, and uh, and Jerry Colom, I mean, to be fair to him, he should have won that race at Cheltenham last year when the real Wacker won. And yeah. if he if he did win that. There's only one horse that's beat him, and that's yeah. Gallop de Champ. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it's, it was a horribly hard race last year, and he came here and absolutely hacked up. Now, mm. to be fair, um, you could probably name a dozen horses that would have hacked up in that race, given what's happened to the ones behind. It yeah. wasn't the best race in the world, but um, we know that you know he's a really hardy horse who thrived on racing last year. And... You know, sometimes sometimes you can go overboard on how hard a race. There is no harder race than the Gold Cup, is there? But if you remember when Native, you know, Native River against Mike Bite was mm. looked a lot more brutal than that. Mike Bite came out a few weeks later and absolutely hacked up in this race. And I think he's by far the most most likely winner. I I was a bit when he got beat a long way by Gallop in the Shop Leopards down. I was a bit you know suspect of how good he actually was, but prove me wrong. I thought he ran an absolute mm. cracker. Well, they, I and, mean, they've got Tiapu ready. I mean, they, it was almost as if they thought. We're going to get these horses will be ready for Cheltenham. Never yeah. mind. Yeah, and I, you know, I genuinely don't think he's a bad price. I think you know, I think he's a backable price um, at seven to four. I'm surprised, a little bit surprised on the drift. Um, like I said, one, one of the rumours you heard about Nichols, uh, about the Hendersons was that Shishkin didn't look particularly great at the moment. But I mean, you know, who knows whether that's true? And you know, he's a tough old horse, Shishkin, isn't he? Um, he's two from two here. He is well. two from two here. If there was eight runners in the race, you could give chances to a horse in your gentleman's game of it in the frame, couldn't you? But with six, uh, you're less inclined to have an each way. But well, I, I find gentleman's correct, game. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Stevens, but you are three places. We certainly are three places ah, in this race, yes. Right, well, there you go. I might have a couple of quid each way on gentleman's game then at a big price then, because I can get. Like, did I read? You know, are you Sorry, quarter the odds as well? Uh, no, we're a fifth. <laughs> 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 Give a man a inch, he takes them up. I'm, I'm being lazy. I should have done this research. Did I read somewhere Mouse Morris hasn't had a winner since November? Did, did I? Did I dream? Ah, that? Yeah, that, that might be. That might be possible. Uh, 145 days since Jump Swin. 121. He's only had 21 runners. 21 runners. I, I mean, this is the problem in Ireland. You know, you know mm. Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins have got all the runners, and uh, you have six months without a win. If you're another Irish train, you've only had half a dozen. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, uh, it's difficult for them over there uh, against the big guns. But yeah, it's, it, has to, it has to be a little bit of an issue. And he was obviously pulled up in the Gold Cup. Uh, he's running a tongue tie now, which is quite interesting because he's two from three in a tongue tie. Uh, and the loss was a, a close third in the Grade One hurdle over three mile classical dream a couple of years ago. Uh, he thrashed I am Maximus, one of the national favourites, over two mile five furlong in a tongue tie the last time he, he ran it. 
ran in it. So, you know, and he's beaten Brave Man's game. He's got no issue um, with the ground and the small field will suit him. So, yeah, I, I think he, he'd be an interesting one for the frame. Mm. But yeah. I think Jerry Colon will win. Uh, he did win this with uh, with first left ten at the course play in 2013. Gertman's game also reminds me of my, my best ever festival results was it follow the plan won this years ago. Uh, not you know not same connections but just a similar kind of type to gentleman's game who just absolutely relished the uh, the way this race was run. But uh, Jerry Columbus seven to four uh, Shishkin Corbett's cross uh, stat of the day for you uh, Tom Siegel. I know you love a uh, a stat. It's not a uh, it's not a trend though, so you'll be all right. Um, <laughs> Paul Nichols has won this with Clanders uh, uh, Oboe. Uh, first time blinkers, he won it. First time cheap pieces, he won it. Uh, Sylvia Narco Conti also won this race twice. Um, uh, it wasn't in these races, but the first time he wore cheap pieces, he won the Ascot chase. The first time he wore blinkers, he won the Betfair chase. Uh, what a friend, career best when they put <laughs> blinkers on him. Brave Man's Game, first time cheap pieces. Paul Nichols, three mile chases. Um, Feel I free love to destroy Brave Man's that. game, but it's, it's heavy ground, isn't it? It is heavy ground, but it's he's got he's got he's got big fluffy pieces on there, so that can make all the difference, <laughs> eh, Tom? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom. I didn't, quite, I didn't quite hear there, hear that. Could you just? <laughs> is it Brave Man's game? Across, he was the first one off the list. I don't know. Oh, Maybe right. I'm. I did, well, you Maybe. didn't. But you didn't know how good uh, Nichols' is a record with blinkers and cheap pieces was, though. I, you? To be fair. I didn't have the, a Scooby-Doo about that. No, well done. What a magnificent prelude to me saying it's got no chance. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's got, I mean, it was, it was, it was one to three that you were going to say that anyway, Tom. So uh... <laughs> no, no. Listen, I've listen. All we know about Brave Man's game is that he likes good ground, best yeah. good ground. I mean, he might improve the cheap. I know Paul Winnicott worked him in cheap pieces before Cheltenham and was talking about running him in them, wasn't he? And never did. Uh, he probably wishes he had now because he, he, he ran fine, but he was just a bit laboured. I just don't think he's been the same horse this season. Mm. Now, he might bounce back. He's, he's a big enough price on what he's, what he's done, you know, on, on his best form to, to give him a shot. Uh, Jerry Colomb's quite interesting because uh, I know Connections don't think he wants soft ground. But despite a lot of his form being on soft ground, they think he's better on good ground. They think his best performance came, or one of his best performances came at Aintree last year. On the better ground, they thought he was miles better than when uh, he had soft ground in the uh, Brown Advisory that year. So while he, he goes on it, I think he's a better horse on good ground myself. And so that's a, it's not a, it's a slight negative. I mean, Shishkin could do anything, couldn't he? Who knows what Shishkin's going to do? You know, he could start, well, not start, refuse, fall over, turn around, do the hokey cokey. <laughs> I have no idea what Shishkin's going to do. So he's off the list. Uh, Oi, Senor, I just don't think we'll quite get home under the conditions. I know he likes Aintree, but he sort of got outstayed last year. Thunder Rock doesn't like the ground. I'm a big fan of Thunder Rock, funnily enough, but I just don't think he likes soft ground. Gentlemen's game, I had the breeder on the phone about an hour ago. Uh, Mr. Nick Luck bred uh, Gentleman's game, and he said he could run well. He said he could definitely run well. Uh, he's got bits and pieces of form that give him a bit of a shot, a bit of a shot, but I ended up on the horse that is probably the worst price in history, Corbett's Cross, I think. Um, I, I haven't backed him, but if he drifts out to a big price, I might. I just thought he was the one horse that was on the up a little bit and had conditions going for him. He should be a much bigger price than that. Of course he should. He's only won a Mickey Mouse race and fallen over a couple of times, but just think there's something about him. that It's just an interesting Emmett Mullins decision to running him, run him in this, isn't it? I just thought he might end up winning by default because... I didn't really like any of the others. I like Jeremy Colombo horses a lot, but I just do wonder, worry about a hard race back on this ground after after Cheltenham. So uh, I might end up. I know I won't back him because he's too short. But if Corbett's Cross hit five or six to one like he was earlier in the week, I might, I might be tempted to back in. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we were saying about the fact that JP had what probably the three best um, <laughs> staying of his chasers uh, yeah. didn't we, at, uh, at Cheltenham. So. Uh, the fact that he runs Corpus Cross here, obviously, um, uh, the shunter went close in the manifesto a few years ago, didn't he? Uh, stepping up from um, at lesser company at, at Cheltenham. So, yeah, um, opinions left, bad right, price, and centre. What, what do you think? Is that a bad price? It seems to me like a very short price, Keels Corpus Cross. It, it's a shocking uh, price, but that's part, uh, is partly your fault, is it not, Tom? No, I haven't tipped it. No, it's a shocking price now, isn't it? 
I mean, there's obviously been plenty of money for him. And, you know, I suppose you could say that he's the one that didn't have a hard mm. race at, at, at Cheltenham because he yeah. won so easily. And but, I guess if, you, if, there's, if there's doubts over Shushkin, Brave Man Games doesn't want the ground, a horse in your might well have gone, Thunder Rock's not good enough in Gentleman's Game, it comes from a trainer who hasn't had a winner for God knows how long. I mean, maybe people are thinking, well, there's only two horses that can win it. Yeah, maybe. That looks, well, that could be the case, couldn't it? I mean, then also, you know, what, when we said at the start of the, the, the show that it's going to be a last man standing, if it's as bad a ground as it was with Pembroke, when nothing was finishing, mm. at least we know Corbett's cross stays, don't we? Mm, at least yeah. we know he'll yeah. keep going. Yeah. Whereas yeah. lots of the others might not. Okay. Um, David Stevens, the, uh, the ball, what are we, uh, we thinking from your end? Yeah, I think. I mean, Tom's explained really why the price he is now. I mean, it was a six to one shot not so many days ago, but punters have looked exactly at it as we have there, and he's he's a pretty viable alternative to the favourite. Personally, I, 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 if if Sergino wins, then I can see Shishkin. I mean, Shishkin's actually shortened up just today, five to two from three to one. So there is some support for the Henderson runners. I think if Sergino wins or, or runs well, I think that'll only strengthen the support in Shishkin because he was a very impressive winner of this. And a decent winner of this last year. He's won on heavy, won the Denman on heavy. So there's, there's boxes to tick for Shishkin if he's if he's fit and well. We know he's got the ability on his day. Jerry Colomb's form behind Gallop and Deschamps is, is, is just top class. And this is a classic case of Gordon obviously coming here rather than bothering to take on Gallop and Deschamps at Punchestown next month, you feel. So he's a very worthy favourite, Jerry Colomb, and the most likely winner, I would say. But Corbett's cross, I can understand. You know, he's clearly as a novice, he's got plenty to find. On, on the ratings with certainly the, the front, front two. But, yeah, it's in, in not, you know, not a deep race. I can see why punters have backed him. But if you do think there's going to be a British winner of this race, so you get Shishkin and Brave Man's Game and a couple of others running for you, uh, that is 11 to 10 from 10 to 11. OK. Well, um, I think, given the preview, we don't. But fair enough, 11 to no. 10 <laughs> from 10 to 11. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Gladass says, I back Corbett until, uh, until he proves me wrong. Uh, uh, Jerry finishes alone, says unsinkable boxer. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's the uh, the bowl. Then, by the way, there's there's, there's thousands of you watching uh, right now. Uh, uh, so make sure you do like uh, the the stream if you haven't done so uh, uh, already. If you want a shout out, uh, maybe if you uh, if you want Paul Keely to to wave at your child, give us a shout. <laughs> we'll, t- <laughs> we'll do that for you. Of course, the rest of the uh, uh, the, uh, the evening. Uh, the Aintree Hurdle is up uh, next then, two and a half miles of distance then, uh, and uh, two horses taking a right little chunk out of the the betting here. Perry Pass uh, is six to four. Bob Ollinger is seven to four. Uh, then we jump out to uh, to Langadan at eight to one. Lucia at nine to one. Nami and Lion at fourteens. Marie's Rock at sixteens. Marn's Glory sixty sixes. Beacon Edge is eighty to one. Outsider of the bunch. So we've got eight runners here. Uh, lining up for this 3.30 at Aintree. Uh, Tom, take two, two of them out of it, uh, and we've got a cracking handicap hurdle, haven't we? But um, uh, it's, uh, it's a grade one, apparently. Yeah, very weird field, isn't it, for, uh, for an Aintree hurdle? Uh, wasn't, if you'd asked me five weeks ago who's going to be running the get great Aintree hurdle, I don't think I'd have named any of them. Uh, it's just, look, the Irish, two Irish horses stand out on form. They have to, don't they? Uh, I've been... I was in Pierre Pass's biggest fan last year. I sort of lost a little bit of faith with him because I didn't think he was jumping right. But just on the bare form, he's, he's not run as bad as I thought he had at the time. He gave T. Hoopu a real, real scare, didn't he, in the Hatton's Grace. Went past him and then got beat. He didn't run too badly behind Shiskin uh, State Man the next time. And then he made the running, didn't he? And I don't know. I I could see him bouncing back here. Just the thing is about him is... Would he really like the ground? Don't know. Yeah, I think he will. I think he will. I don't think he'll have any problem with it. I expected him to be start favourite when I saw the entries. I'm, I'm not surprised he's now got there. Bob Ollinger has got no problems with the ground, as far as I can tell. He was impressive at Cheltenham last time. The rest look... I mean, Lucia comes into it, but is she going to stay two and a half miles on the really bad ground on her champion hurdle form? The rest, I'm struggling to find a, I'm struggling to find a reason to make a case for them, even the old, our old friend Langer Dan. So I think one of the two Irish will win it. Uh, page of money you take should show for this purposes I'll go for Impere Pass but I wouldn't be at all surprised if Bob Ollinger won yeah fair enough yeah I mean yeah, he, you're right he's, I mean he's given the state man a, a race he's given uh, Tiapu a fright as well Impere Pass uh, but yeah I think the most interesting thing is um, who we sticking in third for the TriCast uh, Keels and I, I, we're half tempted to have a look at Nami and Lion back, bad ground uh, back, up, back up in trip to that good Kempton run flat track will suit uh, 
yeah, yeah, I can definitely. But Wolford is third. I can definitely see that. I would, you know, I would back him without the, the front pair. I think, um, but I think Imperial Pass will win. Um, if you'd have been told at the start of the season that Imperial Pass would run the Aintree Hurdle and be second favourite to Bob Ollinger, you'd have been <laughs> yeah. laughed your head off, wouldn't you? Like, you know, I mean, I mean, he's favourite now, but only just. Um, Bob Ollinger's uh, has been a cracking comeback, hasn't it? To be fair to him. Mm. Absolutely destroyed Marie's Rock at, uh, at Cheltenham. He's run a blinder behind State Man, beat Impere Pass quite comfortably at Leopardstown, although that one didn't want to make the run in. And I think the, the key with Impere Pass, I mean, I was saying last year that you know he would have won the Supreme, etc. But maybe he wouldn't have done. Maybe he just does want two and a half miles, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That's what you know. He won the. Uh, you know, well, I mean, his numbers suggest that the, 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 you know. the Cheltenham win and the, and the second to Tiapu suggest this is his trip. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, he's had his, you know, he may have had his issues. There was rumours that he was a bit of a bleeder or something. But I mean, he hasn't run that badly at two miles, has he? You know, and the one, the one race at two and a half miles, it's, it's just, you know, it's no disgrace whatsoever. And going down by eleven to Tiapu off levels, is it? You know, so, um, so yeah, I think he's the one to beat, and I think he's now the right favourite. Yeah. Yeah, and I know obviously it's, it's you know different disciplines and all that, but he battered Gaelic Warrior last year over uh, over this trip. He waltzed over at Punchestown, like you said. He gave Tia Poo's the best stayer in uh, around this season a fright. Yeah, I, I, I mean he is favourite now, isn't he? But I was going to say I would make him favourite, but he is favourite. Uh, six to four in pay pass at seven to four. Bob Ollinger. Any of these uh, get involved? I mean, what do we make of Langer Dan? Um, he, he's a he's a, a handicap project up in. Up to a grade one. I mean, although to be fair, David, maybe you know if they really go for it, he, maybe he's been a grade one horse all along. <laughs> well, he's made history by becoming the first horse to win two Coral Cups, and we've said if this isn't the deepest grade one, then well worth having a go here. And an eight to one is an each way price. But I mentioned at the top of the show, but the price boost here is Bob Ollinger. The reason behind that was the Coral compilers. Terrible, really, but they came on to me and said, what's my nap on tonight's show? And I said it would be Bob Ollinger. And they said, we'll price boost it then. It was 11 to 8 then. It's now, as we can see, 7 to 4, and it's 9 to 4 on the special. But I'm sticking with it because I thought he beat Imperi Pass Fair and Square last time. He's a bearing Bingham winner. He's a, he's a class horse. This is his trip. He won't mind the ground. And I think he should still be favourite. So, Coral Compilers, I hope you're wrong. OK, there we go. The old uh, David Stevens... Uh... Uh, curse uh, aboard Bob Ollinger then, 94 uh, from uh, from 7 to 4. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a funny old entry hurdle, uh, Keels, but um, what's the uh, what's the angle? Uh, yeah, I think in Paris, pass will win. Okay. Uh, Mr. Siegel? Yeah, I was reading Willie Mullins. Uh, column today and he, he was very very negative on Impero Pass and thinks he's not going to win, but I am with I'm with Keels, I think he will. Okay. Um, again, like I said, I mean, I think I looked at it, it was a, a 48 to 1 treble. The three Mullins horses in the foot tomorrow. I don't think that was that bad, really. But um, as for any opinions at home, uh, Bob Ollinger over in Perry Pass says, says, says Tom Leach. Uh, and um, diddly dee dee dee. Price on Bob Ollinger is not great, says Luke uh, Wilkinson. And that's it. Right, uh, three more to go then uh, on uh, on day one of, uh, of entry. Uh, crikey, I mean, uh, what a race we've got here. The, uh, the Fox Hunters, Hunter Chase wasn't fantastic at uh, Cheltenham in terms of numbers. It was a cracking finish, of course. Uh, but 22 of them over the national fences in heavy ground. Well, we're going to get a taster, aren't we, ahead of, uh, of Saturday's big race. It's on the line. It's 4-1. to one. Spyglass Hill, 5-1. to one. Time Leader, 11-2. Animix, 11-2. Benny's King, 13-2. Romeo Magico. Is uh, is ten to one. Uh, Gaborio is elevens, and it is eighteen to one. Bar those, uh, but uh, one of the only, um, one of the only JP chasers to to, to get beat. I think at uh, at Cheltenham, uh, Tom was it's on the line, and it was on the line as well. Uh, and obviously, there's there's controversy with with the winning jockey after that. So, is it as easy as as, as just backing this one at four to one? I don't think so. I think it's a lummox. I don't like that word. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good word. It's a good word. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> that's, he, he fell in this race last year after smashing into a few. He didn't jump very well at Cheltenham. I just don't think he really likes jumping that much. Uh, I could be wrong. He's the class horse. He's got the best form. But he's not much better than Time Leader, is he? Time Leader was cantering all over him at Cheltenham and then didn't quite get home. Uh, back at this trip where he ran so well he ran a brilliant race in this race last year i can't 
I prefer Time Lee to it's on the line, I think. But I don't really like him either because I'm worried about the very heavy ground for him. I think Spyglass Hill is, I don't know, he's been hanging around in Ireland for many, many years, not winning many races. He won a point to point uh, uh, hunter chase narrowly. Now he's second favourite for the entry fox hunters. No, I don't fancy him. Animix is very interesting, has to be. Uh, another Willie Mullins horse, Ross. Uh, Loves heavy ground, ran brilliantly in the Topham here. He was third under a big weight in the Topham here in 2022. No problem with heavy ground. I think one of Willie Mullins is young up and comes. Luke Turner, is it? Rides him. I think he'd go well. Romeo Magico is the, is, I prefer him of the Emmett Mullins too, but I'd much prefer him on better ground. So, like all these big fields, I'm, I'm a, got a terrible record over the national fences in Tetna for the last 10 years. I used to have quite a good one, but I can't resist having bets. It's ridiculous. I'm a terribly, um, I'm what Keels would describe as a, as a, as a, you know, a bad punter when it comes to these type of races. I'm, I just can't resist having a bet in them. And I ended up on Rebel Dawn Rising at a big price, simply because he's a bit quirky. He's tried to give away a couple of races at Fake. He did give away one race at Fake, and where he was 15 lengths clear of Janica, who was a quite good horse in his day, and refused at the last and unseated his rider and then back at that track last time he was five lengths clear and sort of stopped to a walk at the last almost refused let two horses go past him and then went still went past him and won by two and a half lengths so i think he's got a lot of ability go back to his cheltenham run last year he ran against premier magic who had won the cheltenham fox hunters and he'd won it pretty easily and he gave him a real race two out turned into two out the two horses were miles clear on the bridle he just got outstayed. But I think back at this trip on ground, you're like, it's a really good jumper. I could see Rebel Dawn Rising going well just to the price. But I love these races. I love having a bet in them. But I can't say I'm, I'm overly confident. Of those are the short prices, I like Animix the best. But I've had a few quid on Rebel Dawn Rising. Okay, Rebel Dawn Rising. It's an 18 to 1 shot here. There are obviously a lot of uh, old friends in here. Benny's King's done me a, a favour or two in the, uh, in the past. I'm pretty impressed with. Gaborio last time out, but um, I'm going to turn to you. <laughs> you, you know what I'm going to say. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? Go on. Do you know what I'm going to say? Go on. We've got you've got your Zanzas, mm. you've got your Monda measures, mm. but third division, T Clipper. No. Surely no, there is. No. Okay, no, no, no. Have Go on then. Can I have a guess? Go on. Uh, Lieutenant Rocco. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. I called him Lieutenant. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like Tom, like Tom. Um, I think Adam Mix was the most likely of the front ones, but I am rubbish at these races. I have to warn everybody that I, when yeah. it comes to hunter Stay chases, no, 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 not national fences, hunter chases. Yeah, uh, oh. um, but don't understand the form generally. Uh, so you have to take what I say with a pinch of salt. And I, what I end up doing always is having a few quid on an old favourite. And Lieutenant Rocco is very much an old favourite. He was a pretty good horse a, a few years ago. I actually, what was the I actually had him as my been? banker for the uh, Ultima. Yeah. Uh, and then he swapped trainers and then got injured and didn't run. Uh, but back in the day, he was a bold jumper who loved heavy ground. He is three from five on heavy ground. He is in and out. He ran a, he ran a pretty good race uh, when second at Taunton first time. And then there was a long way behind uh, Espoir de Guy and famous Clermont at Wincanton last time, but that's him. Now, he did run in a cross-country chase at uh, Cheltenham last year, mm -hmm. and although he was beaten a long way, the three horses that beat him a long way were like, you know, three stone better than him. Yeah, well, the and great he was, a, you know, he was fourth of 16. He was the second lowest rated horse in the race. So, you know, I think if he takes to it, he'll go really, really well for a long way. Okay. Uh, and probably won't be good enough um, but he's a big horse who's, who's a bold jumper and I think he might enjoy himself. Would you go as far to say he's a lummox? Uh, no, I don't think he is a lummox, no. 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 What, no what is, is to the technique? I think he's he's not a, a, is, is a lummox someone who's big but ungainly? That's the, yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. You're not just big, but yeah. you're... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he's, a, he's a big horse, but he, you know, he, he gets his feet out and puts them in, points them in the right direction and gets over, okay. I mean, that's, that's, what we're, that's anyway. all we're asking for, isn't it? <laughs> that's all we're asking for. Okay, I mean, I am half tempted by T. Clifford. I mean, he keeps running him over three miles. I mean, if he's a three mile around, I'm a Burton's mannequin. So he's not, he's, you know, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not a three miler. He's probably a two miler, really. But this part of me in the back of my head can just see T. Clifford. Yeah, but he's not a heavy ground horse, is he? Uh, he's, a, well, he's a soft ground horse. 
God. It's just that three mile trip. I don't know. It's in the back of my mind. It's in the back of my mind that, that finally he runs in a race where he's not going to be absolutely goosed over three miles, which it could be. But then again, it's going to be bad ground, isn't it? So it might feel like a three mile race. Uh, but yeah, four to one the field here, uh, David Stevens. A clumsy, stupid person. <laughs> the Oxford I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the Ox Oxford Perfect. English, definitely. Right, Sorry, I thought, right. I, thought, I thought you were reading my, uh, right, my, my name school is reports Paul again. My name is Paul Keeley. I am a Lummox. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to Lummox Anonymous uh, for this evening. All right, David Stevens. Um, uh, you've thrown me right off there. What were we saying? Yeah, um, wouldn't be my area of expertise, Hunter Chase, but Animix, form over the, the fences in the top a couple of years ago. One on heavy ground last time. Patrick Mullins rides, I think. Did Tom say someone else? Patrick's still riding, I think, doesn't he? But yeah, anyway, he's, right. he's the last yeah, time. But, um, and he's part of Willie Mullins team that yeah could well clean up this week. So Animix for me. Okay, well, that's the uh, the fox under there. Two more to go. Uh, two miles the uh, the distance for the uh, the Red Rum Handicap Chase uh, up next, uh, where uh, we've got the uh, the Grand Annual form uh, being uh, being tested here. San Roi is nine to two. Uh, can't wait to hear what Tom makes of him. Unexpected party, 32. Pat Daru, 7 1. They were all uh, in the mix, of course, in the Grand Annual. Then you've got Heltnam, who didn't go to Cheltenham, uh, 87 1. Whiskey Wealth, 8 1. Saint Brew is 8 1. Dancing on My Own is 12. And Irish Blaze at 12 1. Bigger price as the rest. This is, of course, uh, a, uh, another chance that Grand Annual form. But it's been uh, 10, well, 11 years, actually. Uh, Paul Keelan, going to be 11 years since a horse ran in the Grand Annual and then won this. 38 of them have tried since. Get out of it. The last one was Oiseau de Nuit. What, who ran in the Grand Annual? Or won the Grand Annual? Ran in the Grand Annual and then won this. 38 runners, 11 no, years. No, not true. Are you not sure? Having <laughs> not having that? <laughs> yeah. Not having that? I'm I pretty sure it, it's true. I made it two of the last eight. Did you? I had run in it. Am or I run at, Oh, run at Cheltenham, maybe. Because uh, edited, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. All right, let's go. Let's go quick. Who can find out? Oh, right, hang on. I don't know. Edited. Someone's being a lummox here. <laughs> Someone's being a lummox. <laughs> no, it's anonymous, Dave. What should we talk about? Hang on, oh, hang, yeah, on yeah, hang on, yeah, hang on. Yeah, hang on, what's that doing? Week 2013, running the Grand Annual. There's your winners. There you go. Look, there you go. Look, he's there. Oh, okay. What's that doing? Right, okay. I'm pretty sure something ran in it. <laughs> Double W's <laughs> ran in the Double W's definitely ran in the Grand Annual in 2017. Right. I'm telling you. I, I mean, it's this is absolute. It's terrible. But I, I mean, you're wrong. You, oh, no, I he mean, didn't. He ran in the. Uh, he ran in the Turners. Yeah, already juicing. What as it was it? Oh, I, it's, okay. almost as if, it's almost as if it's okay. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm giving that up. I've made a mistake in the paper tomorrow. Well, then, better bloody tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! There we go. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, Tom, what do you make of the uh, Red Rum <laughs> Red Rum Handicap Chase? <laughs> finally, finally, a race. To have a, yeah, to yeah. Have a proper look at. I thought. I mean, they were, I like all those great ones, and you know I do. But four runner, four five runner ones on heavy ground. I thought this was really interesting. Don't like Sam Wah. You know I don't like Sam Wah. Rossi was setting me up there. I hate Sam Wah. He can't jump. Uh, good luck to all those back in summer. If he wins, I lose. Uh, simple as that. Every time I'm done. So Samar's off. This unexpected party has got a chance again, hasn't he? I know your stat there, but he was impressive. I mean, the, the, the first two were a long way clear. Elton, uh, yeah, I like him. A bit high in the weight. Path de Rue didn't really get home last time. Two I liked. Well, it was three I liked. Uh, first one, the one I liked most was San. Oh, Mr. Tom Seagull, I, I don't. I, you know what? I think we're going to end up back in, the, for the first time in history, we might end up back in the same two horses, probably in any race, but in a two-mile handicap chase as well. Sam, um, one of them was it? Yeah. Uh, well, I had a shortlist of three: that Whiskey Wealth and Dancing on My Own. I thought I couldn't see out of those three. Oh, I had Whiskey Well, Sam Bree, and uh, Jerry, or whatever it was called, da Gary Moore's horse. It's a big price. Uh, oh, where are we now? I've lost him. Black Jerry. Black Jerry, Black yes. Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Black Jerry. I thought that had a chance back at two miles on soft ground. But I ended up, I've backed Whiskey Wealth and Sam Bree like you, Ross, clearly. Uh, just thought Whiskey Wealth is just an improving horse, loves heavy ground. Time was very good at Garen last time. Good claimer taking seven off. Had a runner, Terence O'Brien had a runner run very well at Cheltenham uh, in the boys' race, conditionals race. So just thought he was just a horse that's going well and improving and likes the ground. 
Uh, Sam Bui, I just thought, has always been very highly regarded by Paul Nichols. I thought he jumped really well at Chepstone. I thought that was a really good little race at mm. Chepstone last time. A big fan of the, the winner, Prince Quali, I think he's called. And there was some calico and some good horses well beaten off. I think that's really good form. I think heavy ground, two miles. The key to him is settling. And I think I'm hoping there'll be plenty. There nearly always is plenty of pace in this race. I'm hoping that that's the case again, because I think Brani Frost will have a better chance to get him settled, uh, because he, he'll need to settle to get home. And so that's my slight concern about him. But I still think on the form of that Chepster run, he's got a very good chance. Uh, Whiskey Wells, the other one I mentioned, uh, Black Jerry, I just saw he's just five pounds lower than he was last year when he won at Ascot and two, when he first time at two miles, back at two miles, wasn't it? Beat Freya Darm, didn't he, by four and a half lengths or five lengths or something like that. I just thought it might be, the, if, it, if the race fell apart, I think he probably might need a bit further. But I think just a, just a race that sort of falls apart suits him. That's what Ascot did, happened to Ascot. And at this race could, because... Invariably, they go quick in this. But Whiskey Well, Sambui, uh, Black Jerry, and another one as well. I don't know, Keels might remember it. Black, Ross O'Sullivan sauce. Big fan of Ross O'Sullivan. Can't remember what it's called. Uh, uh, well, I can talk about that one. Oh, yeah, can talk about that one. Okay, we'll uh, get to that in a second. I mean, just, just to so, to, to, uh, yeah, I think we're having a combination try, I guess, on a few here. But, uh, but yeah, okay, yeah, Whiskey Wealth. Um, yeah, that form, that, that Goran form has worked out incredibly well as well, hasn't it? I mean, it was backed as if he was. You know, a, a stone well in, and Mount Frisco has placed in a good race. Um, Sunny Villa has, has come out and won nicely. Figure Rock's placed in a half decent race. But I, I mean, personally, I agree with you. That Son Brew, I watched that, che that Chepstow run back, and I thought, how the hell is this? That, how is that its first run over fences yeah. for, for Nichols in that ground? I mean, he still, I, I thought he jumped well, Tom, but he still looked a little, it was a little educational, I, I, I felt. But um, yeah, I thought that was an absolute cracking run. Yeah, I thought that race was really good, and he just he was one of those races, you know how when you watch a race and your eye's drawn to one horse, it happens yes. often at Cheltenham, you just think, well, that horse, Chianti Classico, kills his horse in the mild mayor fleet, you know, yep. Harry Redknapp's horse. They just stand out like a sore thumb. You're watching races, and they suddenly think, well, that's not going to lose, is it? Yeah. And Sambri was one of those, and he did lose, which was a bit annoying, yeah. but... Uh, I think that was a really good race, and I think he, he just travels and jumps. Mm. I just I like him a lot. Yeah, yeah, so do I. I mean, I, yeah, I, if I didn't know the result of watching that replay back at Chepstow last time, I, I would have, you know, done my money saying that he would have, he would have won that race. But uh, Keels, what did you like? Uh, well, my short list included Sombri, uh, Whiskey Wealth, and by the same token, now Sombri's one of the That's ones. The I, one? One, one of the ones I have backed. I actually thought it was a massive eye catcher. Just was too free first time over hurdles. I backed him in the Imperial Cup. He was too free again, wouldn't refuse to settle. Uh, but fences have seen to make him just be a little bit more tractable. And, and yeah, I did. I did really like that run. And he's definitely got a he's definitely got a decent prize in him. I think mm -hmm. of that mark, he'll be fifteen, possibly twenty pound higher next year by the end of next yeah. year. Uh, I think he's very. Uh, I think he's a very promising horse. So yes, I liked him. Um, I was a little bit concerned that there's a fair bit of pace. Now yeah. I know it holds up quite often, I was but say, how many as Tom said that has just race? as Tom has just said, uh, this, given the ground, this is one of the, the races that could just fall apart, and that made me interested in by the same token because he's going to come off the back, and he's just been in the form of his life this year. Uh, it's at a low level. Uh, and he's not exactly a he's not exactly a massive winner, but I mean he's one of those horses that can't have the ground soft enough, and he will be fighting his way through them. Um, they didn't go fast enough for him last time at, at Nate, when, but he wasn't beaten very far, finishing really strongly. The time before he might have been beaten 15 lengths by Nettie Well on on at Haydock, heavy ground, but the winner's 21 pound higher now, uh, and yeah, I just think his horse is going to go well at a price. Okay. Uh, plenty of opinions there in the uh, the red room. David Stevens. Uh, four places each way just to say in this, but this is a race we are either going to be all celebrating like mad tomorrow or we won't mention it again because the two horses on my list are Whiskey Wealth and Sombri. All the reasons have been said. Whiskey Wealth, that win on Gore and that heavy uh, looks an ideal preparation. Like he'd been jumping like a lummox up until John Shinnick got on board with him, but John Shinnick gets on board really well with him. And Sombri, again, you look at that Chepstow race, how he didn't win. I do not know, but they are the two for me. As I say, four places each way. Okay. Oh, there is a Dan Skelton special, but 
because the Arkle winners, no, the Grand Annual winners can't win this race. We will we'll, we'll gloss over it. Well, then okay. I do. Th Heltenham has a similar. <laughs> Helton dropping back in trip has a similar profile to what expected party when he won the Grand Annual, so I think I'd rather back that one. But yeah, let's cross over. Uh, one more race then quickly. Uh, rattling through the uh, the final race of the the day, the Mayor's Bumper uh, Baby Cakes five to two, Honky Tonk Highway four to one, Jubilee Alpha seven to one, Diva Luna fifteen to two, uh, Mongo Bello is uh, ten to one, Speculatrix twelve to one, Listen to Your Heart is fourteens, Metcaina sixteen to one, bigger prices the rest. Um, uh, Twenty p from me, Tom Siegel. You like a bumper? Was I, I bloody loved the way Diva Luna went about it last time out. But apart from that, it's over to you. Yeah, I like Diva Luna too. The only thing I'd say is Honky Tonk Highway battered her, battered that Lummox Diva Luna in the uh, <laughs> in the in a point to point, and has come out and won on her debut for Dan Skelton in a listed bumper at Sandown. Uh, I prefer her form to Baby Kate's. She'll like the ground, so honky tonk highway for me. But I am, I do agree with you. Diva Luna has a shot. Right, you know how much I hate bumpers. Yep, I've had my biggest bet of the day in a bumper. What? <laughs> all right, I don't know what's going on anymore. I'm, st I'm starting to lose my mind here. <laughs> uh, uh, all weather winners, <laughs> bumper selections. I mean. Yeah, uh, Monty I'm Bello. I'm waiting for Tom Siegel to walk through that door now. That'll really Mon pull a cake on it. Monty Bello was badly the wrong price this morning. She's still she's still too big, I think. Uh, she there was something wrong with her at Leopardstown last time. She was very well supported for thirteen to two to to nine to two, which is a big move for a non Willie Mullins horse. And she was just hanging uh, and just didn't seem to enjoy it. The time before that, she absolutely thrashed a horse called Sporting Glory. Who next time out? Uh, ran Romeo Culo, Culio to a length and a quarter, giving him five pound. Has since run fourth in a maiden hurdle. Uh, she's well clear on that on that RPR. Uh, she should not be anywhere near a double figure price. I know bugger all about bumpers. I hate them. I fully expect them to hate them even more at five twenty. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, yeah. So just one of those ones where you thought, hang on a minute. Yeah, this is just the wrong price. I'm having some. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, wonders. Have a cease, Mr. David Stevens. Um, at this rate, you're, I mean, Keels is back to winning a bumper. Maybe you'll go through the card and then uh, have the world will turn on its head. Who knows? No, I'll just take Bob Ollinger winning. But uh, four places each way in this mare's bumper. I mean, interesting why specular tricks. They've come here with her. She's been off since February last year. She won at Punchestown. I say been absent since. But the fact that the powerful gig into town, Gordon Elliott combination, presumably they could have found somewhere easier to bring her back. But the fact that coming here, I thought she was of interest. At around 12 to 1. Okay, there we go. Uh, and uh, thank you for, uh, uh, to, uh, where are we? Uh, oh, I've lost him. No, someone just said, oh yeah, Kay Mansfield said, cats and dogs living together, which uh, reminds me of the, the Ghostbusters quote of human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Keels back in one in a bumper, that's it. Uh, right, uh, let's get the uh, the naps of uh, day one on at, uh, at Aintree then. Uh, it's going to be bad ground, hopefully. Uh, it'll be uh, a few good winners to make up for it. Starting off with Paul Keeley, surely not. Monge Bello, come on the bumper. Can't wait for it. Unbelievable. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Tom Siegel. Uh, don't know, Ross. Are you going to go for Sambui or Whiskey Well? Uh, you can have that. You can have that. I'll, I'm sticking to grade ones. OK, I'll have those two against the field in the red run. All right, you can uh, you can dutch those two. Uh, I'll go for uh, Ilite Tomp to uh, to uh, to win the opener uh, on bad ground. Or maybe um, no, you know what? I'm going for a, 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 an each way treble. The Mullin, the three Mullins horses in the Grade One, starting off with Ilite Tomp. David Stevens. Well, Bob Ollinger is nine to four. The duration of this live show, so I'm going to say it really slowly. Nine to four. Bob Ollinger is the nap. Okay. Those glasses haven't made you any more intelligent, have they? No. They did for a couple of minutes, but um, I don't know. It's amazing what you can buy from a garage forecourt. Now, uh, we will uh, we'll see you for more Fun and Games set tomorrow night. Uh, I've said it, uh, if you haven't already, like the stream uh, and uh, enjoy Aintree tomorrow. <laughs>